Hi, it's Robert from Theme Park Insider, and we're back here in Social Distancing Kitchen. Today we're going to be making another favorite from the Walt Disney World Resort. This is grapefruit cake from the Brown Derby at Disney's Hollywood Studios. So we've got our ingredients for the cake in front of us here, all set up, measured out, nice and plus, like we've talked about before. Uh, we're starting out, we've got a cup and a half of flour here, three quarters cup of sugar. We've got... Um, let me check out here. One and a half teaspoons of baking powder. We've got half a teaspoon of salt. We have three eggs that I've divided at this point. We need the yolks and the whites separated. I've got a quarter cup of vegetable oil, quarter cup of water, three tablespoons of grapefruit juice. Uh, I found some, some nice fresh grapefruit uh, here in Southern California this time of year. Uh, we've got half a teaspoon of finely grated lemon zest that came from a tree in our yard, actually, and a quarter teaspoon of cream of tartar. Now, I want to talk about that for a second because this is always people's favorite, one of people's favorite uh, kitchen stories. Cream of tartar is this powder. Uh, actually, your technical term here is potassium by tartrate. I think that's what it is. But um, everyone has a story of somebody who's gone, cream of tartar, what's that? Oh, I'll just go get the tartar sauce and take the cream part out of it, and that'll substitute just fine, right? No, not at all. Uh, this is actually a little bit of an agent that we're going to be using with egg whites here in a little bit that we had there. Uh, just kind of uh, keeps the structure of the egg whites so that we get that nice fluffy air into the cake itself because it's really just something that's going to help us have a nice soft fluffy cake. So a little bit of technique there for, uh, for that. Uh, but we also have, we've got our oven preheated to 350 at this point. I have a nine inch pan that I have greased with butter and I also cut out uh, with parchment paper a circle. And the way you do that is you just put it down on the parchment paper, pencil, trace around, cut it out, drop it in. That's going to help our cake come out nice um, and not stick to the sides when we are ready to be done with that. So, let's get started. Just uh, first of all, a word about the recipe we're using. This is from the Delicious Disney Cookbook. So this is an official Disney recipe. Uh, I know some people have you know, made comments about the recipes that we're using here. Uh, we are using recipes from Disney. Uh, that said, they're not necessarily exactly the recipes that would be used in restaurants because they have big, huge industrial kitchens, and these are recipes that Disney has translated for home cooks. Um, there's going to be one little issue that I'm going to come up with when we are assembling the cake that I will address later, but for right now, let's get started. Let's get baking. So I'm going to take a big bowl over here, and what we're going to do is we're going to sift this flour along with the sugar, the baking powder, and salt, getting that you know, nice consistency for us. Um, and you can see flour comes out a little bit clumpy, but we're going to, uh, you know, I'm just using this here to try and sift that out nicely. Can you get some uh, sugar in there as well? Just kind of move it around so that that'll uh, sift out. There. Okay, so we have our flour mixture at this point. Now what I'm going to use is over here, we're going to start beating up our egg yolks, our oil, our water, our grapefruit juice, And our lemon zest. Get all of that in there. And we're just going to whisk this up. I want to get that nicely incorporated. Just like that. Then we are going to whisk in our flour mixture. This is our cake batter that we are working on right now. All of that nicely done right there. And as usual, there's always a little bit of a mess, but we don't worry about that until it is time to clean up. And we've got a nice, fairly thick batter going there. So now what? What are we doing with these things? Well, they're about to go into the mixer. So we've got our egg whites going into our electric mixer. 
along with the cream of tartar. I'm going to use balloon whisk on this one. Set that up. Slightly different angle than I normally do. Lock that into place. And then we are going to beat that until stiff peaks form. So this is going to get loud here in a minute. So here we go. Okay, we're beginning to get some peaks on that at this point. So I think we're just about ready to put this into the rest of our cake batter. Bring that up here. Yeah, you see that nice stiff peak right there? That's exactly what we were going for. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the egg whites and I'm going to gently fold them into the rest of our batter. So this is a little bit more complex than just, you know, opening up the box and uh, dumping it in with some oil and water and maybe an egg, but uh, We've all got time on our hands right now, so why not try something a little bit different? So what I'm trying to do is I've got that really dense mixture there with this light egg, egg white, and I'm trying to get it nicely incorporated without losing all of the air that's in that um, the egg whites, because I'm trying to get a nice, soft, fluffy cake here. So I'm going to do this as gently folding in as I can, but still getting the incorporation. And now this isn't nearly as stiff as it was before. Yeah, that's what I'm looking for. Nicely incorporated. It's all uniform at this point. Don't see any of that white egg white anymore. And now we're gonna pour this into our pan. Still kind of incorporating as we go along, making sure I get all of it because we're hungry for cake. We want to get it all using a rubber spatula for this because it really helps me get everything. And there we go. And give it a nice little shake to keep it even. I'm not going to tap it here because I don't want to lose air. But what we're going to do now is we're going to put this into the oven. It's preheated to 350. We're going to be doing about 25 to 30 minutes until, you know, the cake springs back. Uh, just so, you know, as we know for cakes being done. And then we're going to finish preparing our grapefruit cake from Walt Disney World's uh, Brown Derby. Into the oven. So now just a, a word about what we're doing next. Obviously, we're going to need some frosting for this. And, um, you know, this is just kind of me here, but rather than getting right straight to the frosting, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and let this cook. I'm going to bring it out and then start it cooling. Because when we assemble this cake, we're actually slicing it into four layers. Because if you remember what the grapefruit cake looks like from the Brown Derby, you've got that, it's basically a seven layer cake, four layers of, uh, of, of cake with three layers of frosting in between. So to get that cake and slice it, we need it all the way cool. If you start trying to slice it while it's still a little bit warm, the thing might just fall apart on you. So to remove the temptation to slice that thing early, what I do is I just go ahead and let that cook. Bring it out, let it cool, and then I will work on assembling the frosting because that will give me some time to work on that while the cake is cooling, eliminating any of that uh, temptation that I have everything ready to go. Let's just slice into that baby. I'm still going to have a little extra time there, but that's why I'm not moving directly uh, to the uh, to the frosting until the cake is baked. Now, of course, we're going to pause right here, and you're, I'm going to be back in just a second. Okay, our timer just went off, so we're going to get the cake out of the oven and start it cooling. Then we'll be going on to the cream cheese frosting for the grapefruit cake from the Brown Derby at Hollywood Studios at Walt Disney World. So let me take this baby out right here. Got a wire rack sitting there on a kitchen towel. I think I'm just going to give it a little test back there. I think we're pretty springy up there, so we're good to go at that point. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to move over to the icing. What I've got are two 8-ounce packages of cream cheese that have been sitting out getting soft there. I've got a teaspoon of that fresh lemon juice from the lemon, uh, another teaspoon of uh, lemon zest, and I've got a cup of powdered sugar that I have sifted. 
And I also have here, it's basically a grapefruit. Uh, it's the uh, pulp inside the grapefruit that I've pureed, and I'm going to get to that in just a minute here. But what I'm going to start with is getting our cream cheese into the electric stand mixture there. And I'm going to, again, whip that on high until it's nice and fluffy. So we've got that attached. Lock that in place. And let's get that going. Now, uh, what I wanted to talk about with the uh, grapefruit here while that is going is that the recipe here, if you take a look at it, that doesn't look exactly like the uh, grapefruit cake that is often served at Disney's Hollywood Studios. Um, what you might notice we're missing there is kind of some of that grapefruit puree that we see in between the layers and then pooled on the top. Uh, so what I've decided to do, this particular recipe calls for adding pieces of grapefruit in between there. Uh, but honestly, there's a section where only we're slicing this into four slices and only really talks about a bottom half and top half of the cake. So I just decided to freelance here. We're gonna make a couple of changes on this. I've pureed a grapefruit here that we're gonna add as we are layering things. But for right now, we gotta get this nice and fluffy. And then, while well, it's fluffing up there, I'm gonna add in our lemon juice and our lemon zest. This is going to be a little bit uh, cloudy. Got to get the sugar in there. I don't want to put too much at once because I don't want it all getting you know, aerosol here. Let's see what's happening. Just a little bit. That was too much. But now that's giving me a nice icing consistency. Now I will give it another go with the uh, spatula there to get all the sugar that is clinging to the side in here before I give it another mix. I want this nicely incorporated. Okay. Okay, I think we're there. We've got our cream cheese frosting. Now we're just waiting for this uh, cake to cool all the way down. Then we're going to begin our assembly of the grapefruit cake. So check back in just a moment. Okay, our cake has cooled. Just popped it right out of the pan. Easy peasy, thanks to that greasing and that parchment paper. So now we need to slice this into four slices, which can be a little bit tricky. So I'm going to cheat. This is a cute little thing. You can find it any place that does cake supplies or at this point probably online. It's just a thin wire that's held on each side. You want to make sure you get the same number of notches on each side. And this allows you to cut a cake a lot easier than just eyeballing it with a knife. Um, so we will see how this works. I'm going to start with my top layer here. It's a little tricky. I'm always getting it started is just a little bit tough. But then once you get it through, you know, going back and forth, just trying to keep this as even as you can. All the way. Keep the cake from breaking. So you kind of keep your hand on top of it here. Mm -hmm. It's always a little tough with these super thin layers. But there is my first layer slide underneath here and then place it right down there. First layer of my cake. So what I want to do is I'm going to put a little bit of this uh, puree on here and get that on there. That's going to soak in a little bit so it's going to give us more grapefruit fruit flavor. Um, wow that's harder to say than I thought it would be. Um, I want to make sure I avoid any seeds here. I tried to avoid putting them in, but there's always some hidden. And then I'm going to take a little dollop of my cream cheese frosting. It's going to be 
my layer here. And this is the, eh, maybe this isn't the most uh, photogenic part of the entire adventure here, but I will get that going. Trick is you don't, ex without a lot of experience here, I'm sure that if you're in the, uh, you're a pastry chef at the Brown Derby, you know exactly how much you need for uh, each layer of this, and we're just kind of eyeballing it, trying not to uh, run out. I was a little thin on that side over there, so just gonna spackle that up with some extra icing. Remember the first layer of the cake there, it's got that little crown on it. So we want to get that nice flush. Uh, so what we're doing is, cheating. oh, that's good. Um, stacking it up like this. So I need to, and we not only have to do the top, we also have to do the sides. So I want to make sure I'm leaving enough of my frosting for that which brings up an interesting point, and maybe we will do this as a vote on the website, but do you call the stuff you put on top of the cake frosting or icing? I think we could get into a nice flame war on that one, since we have nothing better to do at this point. And then for our final, a little bit thicker, I'm flipping it this way, taking my uh, parchment off. That way we get that nice flat top. Actually, I'm going to leave this for the very top, so I'm just going to go ahead and this is going to be the rest of our cream cheese frosting, which is going to go on the top and the sides of our cake. Now I want this to look, oops, don't want to do that. I want this to look nice, so I'm going to make sure I get all of that grapefruit off of there. And we're just going to go all the way here, go around the side, which will you know, hide all of our little imperfections on the side. We're not charging anyone 10 bucks a slice or whatever it is these days. So it's all good. Uh, for this one, actually, usually the, the decoration we see is a big slice of of uh, grapefruit that's been candy, um, which I thought about doing for a little bit, but you know, with with the situation in grocery stores right now, I just didn't feel you know comfortable doing something that's just going to be a garnish. You know, uh, grapefruit can be a good breakfast for someone, and I think I'd rather just leave that in the store for the next person who uh, needs to have a breakfast with that rather than just using it for a garnish that people probably aren't going to uh, actually eat. And then I'm going to just put a little bit more of this on the top. As we're used to seeing the puree on the top of the cake. So what I'm going to do here, move some of this out of the way. Okay, I made kind of a mess with this one. I had fun with it. And that's what's important. I'm going to wipe off some along the side here. And that is my very homemade grapefruit cake from Disney's Hollywood Studios, the Brown Derby restaurant. It wasn't quite up as high as uh, you know the cake might be there, but let's give this a slice and see what we've got here. Uh-huh. And there we go. Yeah, and all of that came through. There we have it. Grapefruit cake from Disney's Hollywood Studios, the Hollywood Brown Derby Restaurant at the Walt Disney World Resort, made in the social distancing kitchen bringing you theme park magic even when the parks are closed. So for Theme Park Insider, I'm Robert Niles, and thanks for watching.